Hello, that was Outwalking by Erlen Wallen. This is the B3 piece of the ABRSM Grade 5 flute exam pieces from 2022. Taking a look at the start of the piece, we are in 4-4 four, four time. We have no sharps or flats in the key signature, but we do have lots of accidentals in this piece. Now, these accidentals don't necessarily relate to the relative minor of C major, which is A minor, but this is because we don't have the constraint of the classical or romantic period on the keys. So the composer is free to add whatever accidental that she wants in aid to deliver the feeling of the music she wants. With the amount of accidentals in this piece, it is pretty much impossible to tell what key this piece actually is in. But we do have some clues. We end the piece on an E note. Now the ending note is normally the tonic or the dominant, the fifth. We also have some scale passages and along with the accidentals in this piece leads me to think that this piece is based on the A minor, which coincidentally is also part of your grade 5 scales. The instruction of play here is lyrically, so we need to play as if we are singing, kind of like cantable. The suggested speed here is crotchet equals 80. Of course, if you feel like playing it slower will help you deliver the music or the feeling that you want, then of course feel free to do that. To play in a song-like manner means that we need to be wary of the phrases and our breathing. We should try and play it smoothly as well. This piece is debatable whether it is in an ABCA form or just through composed. Firstly, we have bar 2 to 10, starting off on the second note of a triplet through a relatively simple rhythm. Secondly, we have a semper exuberant section with single pitted rhythms along with semi quaver scale passages, octave jumps, and ending on a pianissimo. After a two bar rest, we now have a calm section in piano, which will take us down even quieter to a pianissimo. This leads us back into a variation of the first section. The first phrase is the same, but then it changes towards the end. And finally, the ending phrase with a writ and a trill.
We start off the piece with a nearly two bar rest, where the piano is going to be playing a dotted minimum and then a crotchet for the first two bars. So after the second time we hear the crotchet, we're going to come in with our offbeat triplet quavers. Now we do have a bit of a leeway from the piano as they will be listening out for us to play these two notes, but any delay coming on to the third bar could be noticeable. So that was us coming in late. Now let's listen to us being on time. The first phrase is pretty simple rhythmically and notes wise. There are two things that might catch you out. The first is coming in with our triplet where we have the first triplet being a rest. And the second is the quick trill in bar four. Now I'm just going to do a quick step up and down. So we're going a F, G and an F evenly on that note. Now even though the slurs ends here on bar four, the phrase doesn't. Try and keep the same breath until you play the minimum in bar six. Now if you do take a breath, then the music is going to be interrupted a little bit, which will contradict the cantable instruction, which means song-like. One good way to see how you should play cantable is to try and sing the phrase. Does it sound good if you take a breath in bar 4, or is it better to keep the breath on until you get to bar 6? Now this could expose weakness in your lung capacity in terms of trying to hold your breath and trying to expel your breath. Now there are things to try and help you expand that lung capacity such as swimming and running but there are also exercises which you can do such as keeping the metronome on and then trying to extend the amount of time you can play for as you are trying to do in one breath. We are in MP this section with a quick fluctuation on the last minor note doing a little crescendo and decrescendo. So here is the first phrase. If you break the phrase up in bar 4, it's going to sound something like this. You can hear that musically is being interrupted. After the minimum note, we have a crotchet and quaver rest before we come in again on the second phrase. The piano is doing the same dotted minimum crotchet rhythm again, so listen again for the crotchet. It is just a quaver upbeat this time, so don't rush it into it like you might have done last time trying to fit in three notes instead of trying to fit two notes. is a lot more simpler here, just that the dynamics we're going from a piano, a crescendo onto an MF on bar 8, and then a crescendo even further until we get to a forte in bar 10. Now you might have noticed me taking a little breath in bar 8. Now the reason why we didn't do it in bar 4 is that in bar 8 we have a dynamic change we can help mask it as well as having a longer note, a dotted crotchet there instead of just quavers flowing through. The second section is quite different, starting off with instructions of forte, sempia, exuberant, meaning always loud and over the top for this passage. This is helped as well by the changing of the piano accompaniment, which now does repeating quaver chords as well as flashy passages and jumps. For us playing the flute, we get a lot of larger than octave jumps, so make sure you have the correct jump, as it could be a ninth or a tenth jump instead of an octave. 
The first phrase is quite simple rhythmically with quaver and dotted crotchet pairs. The second phrase starts off the same with a quaver and dotted crotchet pair. But after that, the next quaver and dotted crotchet pair, the dotted crotchet has been replaced with a quaver and two tied quavers. We also have a third set, but the quaver has been swapped with two semi quavers while the dotted crotchet stayed. Also note that the semi quaver and the dotted crotchet is a new slur. A semi quaver triplet upbeat brings us a new pattern of phrases, as we continue the slur in a downward staccato semi quaver A minor. As we are slurring the staccatos, don't forcefully tongue each one, but instead go for a lighter touch. We end the slur with a dotted crotchet C and a quaver D tied to a dotted crotchet D, essentially making it a D minimum. Now because the piano is no longer playing in quaver chords, you're going to have to count this one yourself. We have another slur in bar 15, starting off with a tenuous quaver, then a semi quaver jump up and then back down to a D note going up in a natural minor. We're also going to crescendo on the last dotted minimum to get to a fortissimo. Again, we have a crotchet quaver rest before we come in again, but the piano accompaniment has changed. This time we have a subtuplet run up which lands on a chord, and it is after that we come in. The rhythm has slightly changed with the first note being a crotchet instead of a dotted crotchet. After coming in with the piano on bar 17, we have a repeat of the rhythm a minor third lower in bar 18. We also extend the phrase with a tight quaver and dotted crotchet, as well as a tight quaver and minimum. A key difference here is the dynamics. We now have piano with a sabito, so it's definitely piano after we got to fortissimo. There is also a light crescendo and decrescendo into a PP by the time we finish in bar 19. In the third section, we first have two bars rest, but one of those is in 3-4 time. So we're only resting for 7 beats and not 8 beats. So here is the piano from bar 17. I won't be playing bar 17 and 18 on the flute, but we want to listen to for the high note on the piano, the trill and then the low chord on bar 21. The first slur is fairly simple. We also have instruction to be calm as well for this section. It is afterwards that the rhythm gets a little bit more complicated. The second slur from the upbeat of bar 25, we have a crotchet slur to the starting note of a triplet. Unfortunately, the piano isn't playing with us, so you're going to have to count this, playing to the rest of the triplet after counting the second crotchet. So here is from the upbeat of 25 with the metronome. The next slur could also be tricky as well if you have been counting crotchets in this piece. We have a quaver upbeat, a dotted quaver and three semi quavers, and then ending the phrase with a quaver crotchet tied on a separate tongue note. We also have a little crescendo and decrescendo as well. So bar 26 on the metronome.
after a crotch up rest at the end of bar 26, we play in pianissimo, 4 semi quavers and a minimum. This little phrase starts and ends on the low C note, which could be tricky to get, so having your air aimed downwards and a larger embouchure can help. Remember to stop playing the minor note before the piano comes in again on beat 4. This is also to help you taking a deep breath for the next phrase to come. So in bar 25 on the metronome. We have a little bridge before we see our starting section again. Two crotchet threads after the last phrase becoming on a semi quaver A note, then a semi quaver C note tied to a quaver, a crotchet, and then the first note of the triplet. Now, the easiest way to count this is just to wait until beat 4 and then continue with the triplet. So, bar 28 on the metronome. can also use the piano chord as we have previously as a reference. With the piano going from bar 26. From the upbeat of bar 29 to bar 32, it is the same as bar 2 to 5. However, instead of having cantable, song-like, as an instruction, we now have dolls, sweetly. So rather having an emphasis on the phrasing like we did in the first time round we played this, the emphasis now is a bit more on the dynamics and producing a warmer sound. Now with the phrase longer now from bar 28, having an extra bar to play, you could find yourself running out of breath. Now, you can excuse yourself with a brief on bar 30, but if you can, try and extend your breath and build up your breath so you can play the phrase all the way from bar 28 until 32. Bar 33 is a roller coaster scale passage with some rhythm. The shape is similar to bar 7, but not quite. Bar 34 has two sets of triplets. The first triplet has a rest at the start, but we end the phrase with a trill on a G note. With the little trill like we have in bar 4, we're going to step up to an A flat and then back onto a G note. But instead of moving straight onto the next note, we're going to hold the G until we are going to play the next phrase. So from bar 33. Bar 35 to 37 is very simply rhythmically and notes wise. However, the tongue could throw your timing out a little bit, so do look out for at the start of bar 35. Also look out for the last note being 6 beats long and a crescendo onto a forte. So bar 35 to 37. And finally, the ending phrase. We first have a crotchet and quaver rest after the end of the last phrase. The piano is staying the same as the start, so we are waiting for the crotchet chord again. We're doing a ritardando, slowing down. We start off the phrase with two upbeat semi quavers, a three beat trill, this time trilling all the way and not just once, a triplet, where the first note is tied to the trill, and then an octave jump up to the end. So first with the metronome to get the basic rhythm. And now playing with the piano to show you coming in and playing with the writ. Notice that there is a fermenter on the last note, so we can extend that note up to double that, so having 6 beats. You also see a pianissimo at the end, so what we're going to do here dynamically is staying forte up until the last note, do a little crescendo, and then decrescendo all the way to your pianissimo, trying to use up all your breath there to create a dying out effect. So the piano playing from the upbeat of bar 37.
And that's the end of the piece. Well, that was the tutorial of the B3 piece, Outwalking by Erling Wallen. This is a piece with a wide range of colour and expression, going from cantabile to exuberant to calm as well as dulls. We also have a wide dynamic range here, going from pianissimo all the way to fortissimo. Remember that with cantabile we are focused on the phrase delivery, and with dulls we are more focused on delivering a warm sound. With many, this piece could pose some challenges with little bits of syncopation, tight notes, triplets, and a combination of the above. The timing of the rest are also crucial as well, so listen out to the piano, which will give you a cue to come in. This is definitely a piece for you to explore your musicality. Hopefully that was useful to you, this is the last of the Grade 5B pieces. Check out the other pieces in the playlist when they're up. Also check out my piano tutorial series and F1 gaming series as well if you're interested. Give a like and subscribe if you like what I did here, put a comment down below if you want me to go over anything specific, or if you want to show your own tips and tricks for your fellow viewers. And I'll see you in the next video on Master of None. Bye!